I am Jordan. I'm a program manager. Wrong computer. I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio for Mac team, kind of responsible for the general IDE uh, all up, the .NET Core experience in the IDE. Um, how many people here have worked with Visual Studio for Mac so far? That's a good number of people. OK, if you haven't used it yet, no worries. We're going to go through and focus on tips and tricks, which assumes some knowledge of the IDE. But you should be able to follow along just fine. It's actually a good way to get an overview of the IDE a little bit, too. And then chat with me afterward if you've got some questions or um, want to explore it a bit more. And actually, yeah, so real quick for those of you who aren't aware then, Visual Studio for Mac, this is our modern .NET IDE for developers on a Mac. So we focus on giving you a native Mac-like look and feel of the application. It feels comfortable to a Mac user. Provides you with support for building mobile, web, and cloud solutions using Xamarin for mobile, ASP.NET Core and .NET Core to go to the web. We've got Azure Function support and game development with Unity. And all these, we've got C Sharp as a first class citizen. We've also got F Sharp as a language we support. If you want to try it out, you can go to ak.ms slash vs for Mac to download the IDE. I suggest doing that off of the conference Wi-Fi, but give it a try later if you don't have it yet. Real quick bit of info material here. Uh, this week, we just put out our version 7.5 release. So backtrack a year ago, we put out Visual Studio for Mac 7.0. That was our first release of vs for Mac. And this continued the work we'd done with Xamarin Studio adding on web development, expanding our mobile development, going to the cloud with Azure support in the IDE. And all of this is building on top of our open source core of Mono Develop. So uh, that is a random point there on that 7.0 version number. If you get a little confused on that for a brand new product, that's where that comes from. In this release that we put out this week on Monday in 7.5, we've got new support for ASP.NET Core developers with a Razor editor, new JavaScript, and TypeScript editors. And those have been a big request for a while, and something we've been working on for a bit, so we're happy to get that out finally. We have new uh, Azure Functions tooling on top of the .NET Core SDK for Azure Functions, as well as a whole slew of templates, about 10 or more templates that you can use for the common trigger types, like queue triggers for Azure Functions. These are the same set of templates you would get for Azure tooling over in VS on Windows. And as another example of where we're actually leveraging some of the same sources, VS on Windows, and able to take advantage of that with this product. And also, uh, Xamarin changes this, this last week in this release. Xamarin forms with .NET Standard support. .NET Standard is a default code sharing. Uh, Xamarin iOS development supports uh, debugging over Wi-Fi and Android. Devs have a new SDK manager and a preview of a device manager experience for working and managing your emulator images. Then for everybody in general, we've got new features for uh, the latest version of C Sharp with C Sharp 7.2. And the .NET Core 2.1 RC SDK is supported if you install it, as well as we have editor config support, which that allows you to define things like uh, your code formatting rules or code styling rules in a file that the .editor config file, and the IDE will pick that up. So if you're contributing to a project like MonoDevelop out in the open that has an editor config file in it, that helps make it a lot easier for you to be able to just adapt to the conventions of that project instead of needing to go and tweak your personal settings and you know, change it for this project, bounce over to that project. And finally, one I was excited about also in the mix with all this is a preview of our Team Foundation version control extension. That was a big request from last year, and we've had off and on about support for Team Foundation version control in either TFS server, uh, oh, using TFS or using Visual Studio Team Services. So happy to say we've got a preview of that available, working on uh, you know, a bunch of changes there and looking forward to feedback from you to help guide that work. Now, with all that out of the way, let's just focus on tips and tricks. That's why we're all here, right? Tips and tricks are, I'm just going to jump straight into demo mode here, go through the IDE a bit. And my goal is to help you get a feel for ways that you can tweak the IDE to work best for you um, for whatever you're working on. And I'm going to start with what I like to do on any new project when I get into it. Any new application is go on into the preferences, and we're going to start our tour here. So let's hit on a few common preferences you might want to take a look at the first time you get into the IDE. Simple one, changing between light and dark themes for the whole IDE. A lot of us like those. You're just used to it in all the editors. We've got that in VS for Mac. Key bindings. I hear this every now and then. People come from VS on Windows and say, hey, there's a reason you're using a Mac and you want to be there. But you got that muscle memory from working with VS on Windows. We have different key bindings you can choose. 
So for example, by default, we're going to make the app feel like a Mac application. So we use these command C, that's what this is here, as a you know, copy keyboard shortcut. But let's say you want all Windows all the way. You could change to VS on Windows settings. And now it could even go as far as Control-C for copy. And you have keyboard shortcuts that map more to what you may be used to with VS on Windows. I go all the Mac right now. So I'm going to stick with my Visual Studio profile. But this is another good tip here is if you look through the key bindings, you can actually learn some interesting things about the types of uh, functionality the IDE provides. We've got all of the commands listed out in here. And it can be an interesting, you know, sit back with a cup of coffee, browse, to see what some of the features are we've got. There may be some that you'd want to map. Like I like this mini map feature. I can come and set it up with my own custom keyboard shortcut here. And now I would have this bounded keyboard shortcut, tailoring it, tweaking the IED again to the, how I want to work with it, what I want to do. Slip past a whole lot of good stuff and go on down here to some text editor settings I want to call out. We have uh, code folding options. We'll hear this a bit too about um, people wanting to be able to fold and collapse you know, method bodies and regions and such. It's off by default in the product today. In our next release, we're actually just turning it on by default for how common we hear about that. But if you want to control it, turn it off then or turn it on now. Here's this checkbox in here to turn the code folding on and off. And then markers and rulers. There's another good section with some fun things here. I like to have the braces matching when I mouse over, uh, when I click on them. Highlight the current line for my editor. You zoom out here, you can see some live changes as we go for the feature. And then maybe you want to get rid of line numbers if you're not a fan of them. Again, more stuff you can do here in the behaviors, IntelliSense. And then I want to talk for a moment on code theme. So we talked about the IDE itself having visual styles you can change, dark and light theme. Well, independent of that, we've got the ability to change up your text editor to various themes. And we support Visual Studio styles. If you've got something you used over in VS on uh, Windows, for example, like Son of Obsidian, you can use the same color uh, schemes from VS on Windows. You can use TextMate themes if you want. I'm going to stick with uh, Visual Studio look and feel right now. And so those are just a few of the kind of big preferences I wanted to call out there as far as some things that might be useful to you. OK, now we'll jump over to some stuff about navigating around in the IDE. So another common question, how can I open up multiple solutions at the same time? On VS on Windows, you get used to open them in separate instances of the IDE. A little different on the Mac side of things, but we do have the ability to do this, where you can come in, pick another solution what you want to open up. And if you go in your options, you'll see this thing here about closing the current workspace. If I uncheck that, say open, now you'll see over on the left side here in the solution pad, I'll get my other solution to open up for me. And now I can switch between these two different sets of projects as I like, all within one instance of the application, one window. Okay. Okay, so next up, many of us, when we're not presenting a demo on stage at Build, are working with a bigger monitor or multiple monitors. You want to be able to flow your code across those, or you know, just set up your, your environment a little different. You may want to take one file of code, say your HTML markup or something, push it off to one side, work in the IDE. You can take any tab from our uh, document well here, and I can actually drag it out into its own window. And now I could place this over on my separate monitor if I'd like to, and then have them sit side by side. One window here, on uh, one monitor, my other monitor has my main IDE, and I could flow between those. Or maybe you want to instead just have them side by side in your one editor. Uh, like I use a, a, a big 4K monitor at home, and I've got enough real estate on one screen that I don't need a second monitor. But I like to put them next to each other every now and then. So I can actually take and I could drop it here off to the side. And now I can do a kind of a split view of the two files side by side. And this has a keyboard shortcut to move between these two windows also at any time if I want. I can go back to one by hitting Command Option 1, Command Option 2, and split the windows up, pull them back apart. Again, that gets handy when I think of web development, HTML on one side, CSS on the other as I'm working. You can also switch through documents in the well here with this menu bar, go back and forth through history. So that's another useful tool for moving around in the IDE. 
And then a really useful one here is our navigate to bar. So let me open this up here. I'm going to zoom it a little bit so I want you to be able to see the keyboard shortcuts I'm using. OK. So let's say I want to move around in the files in here. I can type, I hit Command period. It jumps you up to our navigation, our navigate to field. And if I type help, I'm actually going to get three different sets of results in this case. I have matches on the files in my project, got matches on types and members in my code, and then I also have matches on the commands in the IDE. So in this case, if I want to go to the helpers class, I could click on that, and it'll jump on over here into that file. Let's say I really just want to jump around files. If I hit that command period, I can do F colon. And now my search is limited to just files. And so I'm searching within the files of the project. Or another handy shortcut is the to get to commands is command shift P. And you have this in Visual Studio Code with the command palette. Opens it up, filters our search bar to commands, and now I can do things like type format and just format the document, command shift P, and I can now run a build. Very handy when you're working with the ID and you Maybe you don't want to memorize all the keyboard shortcuts, or there's this command you know about, but you don't quite remember the shortcut or where to find it. Just Command-Shift-P, pop up there, find the command, run it, and go. In this case, we're going to go back to my visitor repository. And so I'm going to type F colon, and I can actually just VREP, and we get a partial match without having to spell out the full file. And I'll jump back over to my visit visitor repository file for uh, some code demos here. Last bit of layout I want to call out is our layouts feature in the IDE. So we have a set of pre-configured layouts like debug that we switch into when you start to debug your app. It's just a set of common windows, the last windows you had open in your debug session. You can come and create your own layouts, however you want to you know, place the pads on the screen and switch between those, or use some of the defaults like our test pad here or my uh, test layout, and I can run my tests, jump back into code mode if I like, bounce between those. Here you see our test runner on, the left si on your right side, and then on the bottom, the test results coming up. But we're going to go back to our code. All right. Now we are in the home stretch where I'm going to focus the rest of the time really on editor tips and tricks and shortcuts, because really that's where we spend most of our time, right? Writing code, working in the editor, that's where you want to be that coding warrior. So first trick, let's say I wanted to change this first name property to F name. What I just did is I held down the option key and I did a, a, a block selection here. So I can select all of these items, hold down option and select those, and I can just type the new name I want and it'll simultaneously edit all those lines a little quicker than select them, find in selection, replace, and back back out. If for whatever want, reason I want to move my mock data around in this case, I can use the Option key and hit like Option up, and I'm moving the line up, Option down to move it down. So I can move the file or a set of lines up and down and mass that way. There we go. Now another fun selection feature. Let's say you want to work with, uh, well, another trick we got for selection. So I can also do a, a block level selection in my code. And what I mean by that is I could take, and if I hit Option Shift Up, I'm actually selecting elements here kind of at a statement level or block level. So I'm just hitting Option Shift Up. It expanded it to the whole line. I go out to the block. I go up to that um, instantiation. We're going to go on up to the next block, up to my for each, up to the method level. So I can grab whole chunks of the code, and then maybe even just move the whole method around inside of my file if I like with Option Up and Down. So quick ways to fly around the editor window. And there's also identifier highlighting. So if you click on something like this variable name here, in scope, it'll ho highlight all usages of that instance. And then I could choose something like right click, refactor, rename, and name it whatever I want. And now it's changing all those instances in line there within that scope. So it's not refactoring that name somewhere else in the file if it's not truly that identifier. It's a smart. Um, smart identifier highlighting and refactoring the going on. All right. Now, let's look over here at something else going on in the IDE. You might notice, let me zoom it in, over in the scroll bar area are these marks going on on the screen. These are actually calling out some uh, 
recommendations. These are being uh, powered by some Roslyn analyzers taking a look at how I might improve my code. So I've got a message here about a member name could be simplified. If I click that, we're going to zoom back out here so you can see it, it highlights this point of my code, and then it's showing me here if I mouse over this, um, I can scroll through and see some recommendations on how to change the code, get some preview of what it will do if I apply that change. Well, anytime you see a little squiggle or a mark like that, you can actually hit the option enter on your keyboard, and it's going to bring up that quick fix list as well. So if you're coding along and you see a recommendation or a red squiggle come up, hit option enter, and you'll see the recommendations for what you might do to fix whatever is going on. And now I can scroll through, see what it's going to do to the code if I apply that change again and move forward. One other trick here is I can actually hit uh, function option and then like my uh, up and down arrow. And I'm scrolling through each of these callouts that are over there in that scroll bar. So I can take a break. My unit test passed. Now I'm going to play and do a little code cleanup. Page through these, hit each one. OK, I'm going to change that. I like that. Go to the next item do something here, apply my refactorings um, willy-nilly. It should be fine. I don't even need to run the test. Just call it good. Then, let's see. Then the other little hidden gem over here on the scroll area is you see this option, show minimap. And you saw I put the key binding on that earlier. So it shows up here in the, as a command I can choose. And the minimap gives you a visual representation of the whole file. You've probably seen this maybe in some other editors too. It's just kind of a nice way to look through where you are relative to the rest of the file and see it from a high level view. So I could jump around some different blocks that way. Or turn the minimap back off. All right, so let's jump back then. That was kind of the rapid fire there through the tips and tricks. So I'm going to pull up a few screens here, and we'll just recap some of what you saw. There's some keyboard shortcuts up on the screen. Um, we can get you set up so you can download this, later, download this later on or reach out to me. I can get you the deck or take some screenshots like you're doing. Phone's popping out. That's all good. We went over. I showed you some commands for tweaking the preferences, kind of tailor the ID just the way you like. We've got a bunch of stuff around navigation and how you can split out your windows, work with multiple solutions, and then a lot of different commands you can use to help navigate around the IDE. A lot of code selection tricks and um, ways to move around in your editor there. Navigate to is probably one of the most common ones I would recommend getting the hang of. You know, you're in a file, and most of our projects are all split across multiple files. And so you can jump through and navigate to specific uh, classes and types. Maybe you don't remember your file names. You can use that bar to help get to your source quickly, fly around the IDE. And then a few last resources here, too, for you all. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, that top link there for VS Mac will let you download the IDE from the Visual Studio website. I got a link to our docs, a lot of great getting started information there, um, deeper dives on our different editors and such. Uh, we got a report a problem link that takes you to our developer community site. And we're actively watching and responding. And yeah, you know, I'm out there looking around at items. And, and see, we have to base everything we do off of what we hear from you all, so please do Report us the pro those problems, provide suggestions with our suggestion link here out on user voice. And then you can also follow along with a, couple, a few things on Twitter there. We got a hashtag. We tweet out through the VS account, and then I myself have my own Twitter account that um, I share some stuff out on, usually about VS for Mac. And then you know we're right at the tail end, so the very bottom session here, which is going to be in this theater, theater two, right? Uh, right after this around Azure Functions with the Laurent. That's the last one you can catch out of all of these. But here's a quick recap of some sessions throughout the week that apply to VS Mac because they're about different uh, features or SDKs or things that we also support in the IDE. So after build, if you missed some of these, jump back up on uh, Channel 9, check them out. Uh, Michaela's talk, I highlight at the top there about what's new. She spent a good 45 minutes or so deep diving into those new features and demoing what we had there and talking um, more at length about those bullet points I just briefly touched on at the beginning. Now with that, we're right at the end. So please share out any evaluations you've got. I love your feedback. I will be able to talk here right after for a moment if you want, or I'm going to be over at the VS for Mac booth, which is over under the tools banners, and we'd love to chat with you more about anything VS for Mac. So thanks, everybody, for the time. I hope the whirlwind was useful.
See you tonight.